OK, uh, plenty more to come at Kempton. We're just going to turn our attention back to the Breeders' Cup again, uh, not to any one race, but to one rider in particular, because this is something um, you wanted to flag up, really, Dave, and, and that is Ryan Moore and his performance over the two days. Yeah, I, I think it's just worth pointing out, particularly um, it's not that long ago. I can't remember if it was at the beginning uh, or this time last winter at the end of the flat season or the time before that I think it was the time before the time before when um, I think it was Paddy Power who would who went six to one on about Colin Keane mm. becoming the Ballydor stable jockey at the start of the following flat season and uh, Ryan Moore uh, you know in 2022 the year when he celebrated his 39th birthday has been Absolutely exemplary, hasn't he? I mean, it, if it, it, it's you know, we all follow social media, and the the opinion was that he had lost that aura of invincibility around him. Well, if he did, he certainly got it back now. Um, his his performances this year, you know, it, going back, what was it? It was at Chester, wasn't it? When he was just yeah, absolutely the man with the golden gun. Um, and although Aidan O'Brien has had not the the best year in terms of uh, his three-year-olds, he was brilliant on Luxembourg when he won uh, the Irish champion. And over these uh, two days at Keeneland, again, I mean, he was just absolutely exemplary. Well, we can have a look at, at what he did, all of his rides and where he finished on them. Only one... Uh, where he, he finished out of the top two. So he was second on Dramatise in the turf sprint, one on Meditate, one on Victoria Road. There were uh, two wins on the, on the first night. Emma Artian, I thought he gave an excellent ride to. That horse was back to form. Tuesday, he won on in the Philly and Mare turf, had her in the ideal position. Order of Australia was sixth in the mile, and then Stone Age was second in the turf, although well put in his place by Revel's Romance. Um, let's take them one by one. The other thing about the Dramatise ride was what he did before the race as well, because Dramatise did her very best to, to get rid of him. And um, look at the top of shot, you can yeah. see, most importantly, he doesn't let her go, because otherwise she might have been gone. Yeah, it's amazing, isn't it? Really, not what you want before the start of a, a uh, self-titled thoroughbred world championships race and so uh, this is something that George Baker pointed out on the night it, it really was gate from the gates how switched on he was he sort of knew where he wanted to be on on each and every horse um, dramatized he's you can see him nudging her up there just to just to, to latch on but to also go the shortest way around on the turf initially um, and there were a few times, actually, a couple of times on the turf, Dave, he went outer. A couple of times he went inner as well. But uh, I thought he was alert for, for all the race. And the 50-50 calls, by and large, all season he's got right. And he definitely got them right at Keeneland. Yes, that's very true. I mean, I, I think uh, it's, it, it's perhaps a little unfair to eulogise over Ryan Moore, uh, which is not unfair, it's, it's the right thing to do. But... Uh, Will Buick's effort on Magic Mischief here was also uh, exactly. a, a, a it was, super it was an effort, exemplary wasn't it? Ride. It was a brilliant um, ride coming from further back. And, and, and William Buick, you know, he, he went outside um, and, and, you know, the, the, the horse won, won very nicely. But the point you're, you're making here is that Ryan's... And, and William Buick's consistency was up there, but, but Ryan's consistency throughout the whole meeting was yeah, just yeah. exemplary. Yeah, he, he was superb. No, that, that was an excellent effort by... Um, William Buick, but yeah, it, it just, I, I feel that from watching Ryan Moore and from reporting at the meetings where he rides, I just feel that he's, as I say, if, if he ever did vacate that slot of just being uh, completely sort of in the groove, he's, he's there now. He, he, you know, he got overhauled by Magic Mystery. But that was... done, we can have a look at Meditate as well and, and, and how, um, how brilliant she was and how Ryan got everything right on her. Now, I think Ryan might be the first to say, well, she was so far the best horse in the race. Um, maybe it's not about what I did. A uh, very different demeanour here. He's, you know, he, he allows her to cruise over at, at her, own, her own pace, really. And um, I thought he gave her a real sort of find no trouble right just making sure he doesn't get locked in there but happy to sit three wide here on the turf and then challenge wide as well and um, the point i was just going to say there are, are about you can't expect riders whatever le their level they're at to stick at that level the whole time you have to go through peaks and troughs in your career yeah so it sort of feels like if you look at someone's season overall 
you almost don't want to say, well, perhaps they're not quite where they were. But you know, Ryan, Moss, Ryan Moore's career, as everyone has, has had peaks and troughs. And I, and I think you know, he is right, but I think better than ever right now. I just think, as I say, those, those calls, he's getting absolutely spot on. Yeah, I agree with you. I mean, well, that's just, that's just called form, isn't it? Yeah. Um, you know, we, and I'm uh, sure it ties in with the training you're riding for and all those different things. Well, we were talking about this earlier on, and one of the... I'm sure... Every jockey virtually riding in the weighing room in Britain and Ireland envies Ryan Moore, his job with Aidan O'Brien. But there is one aspect of that job that they perhaps would not envy, and that is when, as often happens, they have multiple runners in Group 1 races in classics, and um, Ryan finds that he's looking across at Paul Beggy or Shami Heffernan or someone like that who has won the derby yeah. and, and that must affect you well last year don't forget Santa Barbara and the Guineas and the Oaks you know that would have been frustrating yeah. seeing Frankie ride those two Absolutely. classic winners um, that was Meditate blowing them all away she was brilliant now Victoria Road when he won the turf the, the juvenile turf I think my initial reaction Dave was that Silver Knot was the unlucky one um, what is interesting I think from this ride is that he ends up even though he was drawn on Silver Knot's inner Ryan manages to orchestrate a, a, a better run. Now, there's no doubt that William Buick's mount was a touch keen early, and yes, he was slightly unlucky. I still think probably on the day the best horse won because William Buick's momentum wasn't checked all that much, but um, I thought the way Ryan managed his position here throughout the race was excellent. Yeah, I mean, I suppose the issue with this one, Tom, is that the, the winning distance between the two horses is a nose, isn't it? So it's the it's the the smallest you can get and therefore any amount of inconvenience for uh, silver knot in the straight surely is going to prove costly isn't it you you did this in the studio uh, during the evening what was the what was the general consensus among uh, the panelists about silver knot and victoria road was it that the um, uh, it, it was that it was that it's hard to say that the best horse didn't win. Right. Um, now, the head-on, that, that excellent drone shot they had there probably yeah. told us that over anything. Um, because you look at it here and you think, well, Ryan's riding, Ryan's riding, Will's just had to maybe check ever so slightly there uh, and there, and now he gets going. But if you look at the winner's ears, this is like George Baker pointed out, yeah. He seems to, as Ryan gets, look, whip in his right hand, he wants him to have company, and he pushes him back over that way, and there was that little moment where I thought Silver Knot could have gone and gone past, and the winner pulled out a little bit mm. more. Yeah, so possibly. I think, he, I think he idled a bit and wanted company. That may very well be true. Oh, yeah. Either could it's, have won the race. Uh, I think, I mean, either, either view is a, is a legitimate one, isn't it? Um, Let's have a look at Emiratiana. There's a, a few other things I'll, I'll throw at you. Emiratiana back to form in the in the sprint. Obviously, there were a few things that didn't work out for a number of runners in here. Well, Golden Power was obviously one of those. Emiratiana breaks really well. And this is another ride where, where Ryan, he has to adapt because we've seen three rides so far. One, is he's gone up the inner. Two, he's gone up the outer. He you know, realises here that the outer isn't going to happen. And by and large, on the turf, you saw that you wanted to try and switch out if you could. But he manages to, to go up the inner. This horse runs a, a great race. It was won by a, by a shock 50 to 1 winner, I know, who's in front at, at this point. And, um, well, this was back to form for, for Emiratiana. This is an interesting race, though, Tom, this one, isn't it? Because wasn't the general consensus going into this that there was going to be loads of pace and that Golden Pal... Would, would still be able to overcome that by just going clear and, and running as fast as he possibly can uh, for the entirety of the race. Isn't that, isn't that right? That, yeah, that it, there it, was, the general opinion was that there was going to be loads of pace and yet... Well, I it's, thought nothing would be able to go as quick as Golden Power yeah. and he didn't break. I mean, um, obviously, Will's mount was a touch unlucky here and, and, and created force and ran really well to, to keep on. And yet it's Caravelle who, yeah, Caravelle, that who that makes all the running and... Um, uh, this was Ryan's third win and, and Aidan's third win. They're, they're most successful ever a Breeders' Cup or Aidan's with um, Tuesday winning the Philly and Mare Turf. Again, she was much the best on the day. Um, I, I just want to address Holly Doyle first of all, if we can. Uh, probably not in the ideal position here, but I think given how the horse finished, 
it didn't matter. I don't think Nashua was going to, to win this race, irrespective of where she was, because she didn't seem to have that kick that we'd seen previously. Yeah. Uh, but, but Ryan is in, what as it transpired on the turf at the meeting, he's in the ideal position, just off the rail, with the ability to angle out. Yeah, I thought that the, um, the, the, the early stages uh, of, of this race were, were telling for, for Nashua. She missed the break I th and thought she was a little bit keen as well. I don't think she just quite had that sparkle uh, that she had shown when she won the Prix de Diane uh, and the Nassau Stakes at uh, Goodwood in, in high summer. But, yeah, I mean, we talk about Ryan Moore again. This is a, um, some effort from These are the Aidan O'Brien, isn't it? This horse was without a win since uh, that narrow victory over... Um, the John Gustin trained uh, Emily Upjohn, Emily Upjohn yeah. in the Oaks and he said afterwards that we were mindful of the fact that she was just three years old when uh, she won that race and um, so we always had an eye towards the Philly and Mare turf and it's worked out extremely well. I was quite surprised that um, Aidan O'Brien hadn't had three at a single Breeders' Cup uh, before but um, yeah I, I, we, we look at uh, the three-year-olds for, or we did look at the three-year-olds for, for Ballydore this year and think maybe that they weren't an exceptional bunch by the standards of uh, the stable, but certainly the, the, the year has ended in really good style. We're going to head to the paddock very shortly for the next. Just one other thing I wanted to throw at you, uh, uh, and again, this is something that George Baker flagged to me. Ryan Moore, 47 rides in Ireland this year. He spent more time over there than ever before. He feels like he's been busier than ever before, particularly over there. Right. He's in keeping with his amount of rides in Britain. And, and I wonder if that's made a difference. I wonder if that's made a difference to the success that he, he, he and Aidan have had this year. I don't know, but I thought that was interesting enough. Already 20 more rides in Ireland than he had last year. Yeah, yeah, possibly. Maybe uh, COVID uh, relaxation have been part of that, but more than ever anyway. Yeah, yeah, it's interesting that. But whatever the reason is, you know, 20, 2022 is a year that he will uh, look at and think, you know, this was this was one where the the planets aligned. He's just been faultless. Okay. Well, his uh, dad's got some lively chances coming up at Kempton. We're going to head to the paddock. Yeah, and just to uh, finish that chat, really, we saw Tuesday winning the Philly Mare Turf, but he was then um, sixth on order of Australia in the mile horses that won that race before, of course, in 2020. In Stone Age, he finished second in the turf on that horse. What a, a fantastic couple of days! Uh, for Ryan and you will see Meditate and uh, Tuesday uh, and indeed Stone Age on the verdict uh, later on today once we're finished at uh, Kempton Park 4.30 I will take you through uh, six races from the Breeders' Cup this weekend now 2.35 Kempton looks like a pretty competitive handicap chase it's the Jamie and Laura are getting married handicap chase over two and a quarter miles and Fred Arm has been well back today for the skeleton